Good evening. Sorry for doing this with my glasses on. With all the glare that comes with it, I don't feel like reading this multiple times, so I'm just not going to. Uh, today we had a Tycho performance that got rained out. Well, it wasn't exactly a Tycho performance in the sense of our usual Tycho performances. We were playing drum to accompany a recorded song that everyone was dancing to for this particular festival. In the middle of August, they have what's called Obon. I'm not really sure what it is with Obon. I asked someone about it today, and he said something about someone coming down from heaven or something like that. What I do know is that this time of year, there are a lot of fireworks that go off. There are some pretty big firework displays throughout Japan in mid-August. This week in August, right around the 15th, is also when a lot of people go to whatever, not necessarily the town they were raised in, but to whatever town their family grave is in. They visit the grave, um, like brush it off, offer some, I don't know, beer, flowers. I'm pretty sure they do offer beer on graves here. I guess alcohol's not that uncommon back home. Anyway, they do. They go back and visit the family graves. Uh, and then they have this festival called Obon, where people like dance in a circle. And it's a pretty basic dance. Last year, I came across this festival. Came across isn't exactly the right term. I was sitting in my house using my computer. I'd just been, I'd been here for less than two weeks, just hanging out. And I suddenly hear fireworks out the window. I was like... Something's going on. I should go see what that is. So I hopped on my bike and I followed the fireworks and I found this festival. Had a big platform in the middle of a nice open space right next to a park. And then there were people, the Taiko Don, which I wasn't part of at the time, was on top of this platform playing their drums while people did their circle dance around it. So I kind of learned the dance. I don't know it well enough to teach anyone, but you basically, if you watch the people around you and what they're doing, you pick it up pretty fast. Regardless, this year, as part of the Taiko Don, I was scheduled to go there, and I guess the district, the little district I'm living in and the next district over traditionally don't have their uh, Bon Odori parade, not parades, festivals on the same day, but this year they do. So we didn't have the big, tall platform. We had a tiny platform, and the Taiko Don was split into two, one for the little district we were in, like one half for the district we were in and one half for the other district. So it wasn't quite as grand as last year. But grand or no, it kind of sucked when we got rained on. <laughs> they still hadn't done the fireworks yet. It had just gotten dark. People were still arriving. Most of the people there were kids, which meant everyone, like, stopped and piled into the tent where they were cooking the meat and, and you know, dishing out the beer and stuff. Um, they went ahead and did the fireworks before it got too wet for the, uh, for the fireworks to go off. And then people started arriving in cars to pick up their kids from the Bono Odori. It was kind of sad. Regardless... That's done. I'm kind of tired because we were like rushing around in the rain to make sure the taiko didn't get too wet. We didn't want the leather drum heads getting messed up, stuff like that. We got that taken care of. And then, since I'd been drinking beer, I went ahead and walked my bike home instead of riding it. Japan's no alcohol while driving. They have a, they have a zero alcohol tolerance for driving, and that includes bikes as well as cars. It wasn't a long walk, but I'm here. Yeah. Anyway, yesterday... Right after lunch, uh, right after the lunch siren went off, so this was the very beginning of lunch, everyone's cell phone in my office started going off at the same time. Not with their usual ringtones, either. Except for my phone, which had been on silent, everyone's phone sounded like little klaxons. What this was, was an automated earthquake alert. I first learned Japan had this system uh, last year, right after the 311 earthquake occurred. Whenever an earthquake of significant si uh, not size magnitude occurs, all cell phone towers in regions that are affected by that earthquake will send out an automated warning to every phone in range. Now, this is directly tied into the Japan Meteorological Agency's earthquake sensing equipment, so the message can be delivered as soon as possible. It doesn't require any input from people. Earthquake happens, sensors go off, cell towers start sending out messages. Now, everything I've read about the system indicates that the warning comes before the earthquake gets there. Like, you get it at least several seconds before the earthquake arrives. So, I mean, like, even if you don't have enough time to read the message before the earthquake come, goes off, it's pretty obvious something weird is up. Everyone's phones are going off at the same time, and, like, my boss and him, Mr. Supervisor, my supervisor, and his boss, their phones were both using doing this little klaxon sound that neither of them had ever heard before. They're like, what the hell's my phone doing? So... And this, then they checked, they checked their phones after this, um, 
their phones, they don't have access to that for a normal ringtone. It's unique to the emergency broadcast system, which is kind of cool. Definitely different. One thing that was interesting is that both of their phones, like, they both, the two of them use the same phone service, and they were playing the same little klaxon sound, even though they had different models of phones. My phone had been on silent, and it didn't have klaxons. It just started buzzing, like it normally does when I get a text. Anyway, it's really obvious when the phones go off for an earthquake alert. Uh, well, any disaster, actually. They use these for tsunamis, too. I don't know what else they would use it for. I don't think it counts for typhoons. But um, it's kind of like when you're driving, and the person in front of you needs to make a sudden stop and taps their brakes real quick before they actually go into their full-on stop. Tapping the brakes doesn't really tell you what's going on, but it catches your attention so that when they do slam on the brake, you're, you have a little bit more time to react. In our case, the warning was followed by nothing. It turned out that the earthquake was an aftershock to the aforementioned 311, which means it happened pretty far to the south off the coast of Japan, and it didn't really penetrate Hokkaido far enough for us in Nakagawa to actually feel the effects of the earthquake. That's not really surprising, considering that it was only a magnitude 7.3. I say only. My sense of magnitudes may be skewed by having been raised in Alaska. But uh, the one last spring was a 9 point something, which is a much, much bigger earthquake than a 7.3. And they didn't feel it here in Nakagawa then, either. They didn't know what had happened in, you know, until everyone went home and started watching the news and went, Oh my god! So yeah, the fact they didn't, that we didn't feel a 7.3 here wasn't really that surprising. Everyone flocked to see, uh, everyone flocked to TVs within the Yakuba, uh, sorry, within the town hall as soon as, as we got our earthquake messages to get more details on what was going on. Because um, on NHK, the Japan Broadcasting Corporation's TV channels, whenever there's a magnitude of big enough earthquake to send out the cell phone messages, they also interrupt whatever programming is going on and, and give you either, like, an imprint on the screen on top of whatever program is going, or if it's big enough, they stop everything, and suddenly a news guy is telling you about this earthquake and what happened. Now, this ended up leading... Sorry, this ended up leading to a discussion between Mr. Supervisor and myself about whether or not the warning was misdirected. The region we're in is called Dohoku, and the message we got said that this emergency earthquake message was sent out to the entire Dohoku region. That's not the same as Tohoku, and since this was an aftershock to last year's quake, last year's really big quake, it's the Tohoku region mostly that was affected. Now, the south southern southeast coast of Hokkaido did feel the effects of this earthquake at a decent intensity, like noticeable, but not really enough to cause any problems. Actually, that's about how intense it was down in the actual Toho re Tohoku region, too. But since, when you're typing, the difference between Dohoku and Tohoku is one key, and it's a very easy mistake to make, Mr. Supervisor was of the opinion that someone had typed it wrong when they were sending out the message. That's how I found out he didn't know, like, he didn't even know that Japan had this earthquake system, earthquake emergency broadcast system in place. So I, of course, argued for, well, it's an automated system. Probably what happened is that they sent it out to the Tohoku region and the Dohoku region, and we both got it because there was some earthquake spillover into our region. He was like, mm, I don't know, I guess he doesn't trust that technology stuff, which doesn't surprise me. He's old enough to be my dad, and in Japan, people who are old enough to be my dad are not really technologically savvy. It's kind of sad. I've probably taught him more about Excel than he knew before I got here a year ago. Anyway, we were like, we had kind of agreed to disagree, and I was like, well, when I go to Sapor Orientation next week, I'll go ahead and ask the ALTs I know from that area, from the area that was affected, if they uh, if they got the message too, because a little bit of Hokkaido is part of the Tohoku region, I guess. But then someone randomly come al came along right after I said that and was like, "Oh hey, turns out we got it and they got it." So it was kind of like, "Ha ha, victory for Lena!" Anyway, there you have it. Uh, got rained out today for a Matsuri, which kind of sucked, and I've experienced the Japanese emergency broadcast system. Too bad it wasn't only a test. <laughs>